And you're welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. Let's say hello to our guest this morning, Mr. Tunikola Wale. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. Thanks for being with you. Let's begin with the papers this morning, the Daily Trust. The headline says, testing isolation centers shot in states despite imminent COVID-19 third wave. Um, the PSC uh, says FG may apply segmented lockdown. FCT, six states on red alert. Why Nigeria is at risk, NCDC. Suspend Dober, committee advises emirs. Also on the Daily Trust, Bullets alone can stop banditry, other crimes. That's according to Jonathan. 14 killed in Oshun, four injured in Abuja road crashes. Salah, travelers in a mad rush for air tickets. Also in the Daily Trust, 15 policemen, 10 bandits killed in Zamfara, Niger attacks. Cops repel attacks on community. Bandits leader frees hostages, dad released. Presidency, Kuka, Tango over U.S. Congress comments. Despite 1.5 trillion Naira funding, power firms still unable to deliver. Uh, those are the stories we're taking on the Daily Trust. All right, to the punch newspapers. The big one on the screen there, it's on e-transmission of results. Buhari's aid defends rejection. NBA, others say resolution illegal and selfish. Senate listened to Communications Commission, cited risk of hacking, says uh, Ujudu. And also National Assembly has tied annex hands, belittled Electoral Commission, says the NBA. We can also see here that any legislation that whittles down annex independence, unconstitutional. And that's from uh, SANs. We can all, um, still on the point, federal government plans 12.3 billion naira subsidy for 2 million farmers. ECOWAS counsels Nigeria to raise VAT on hotels and others. And uh, external reserves drop by $180 million in two weeks. Still on the punch newspapers this morning, commuters groan as ram sellers and buyers block Lagos Ibadan Expressway. 16 killed in Oshun crashes. FRSE blames wrong overtaken. And court fixes Igboho's AIDS trial for Salad Day. Still on the punch, command goes after Zamfara gunmen as bandits kill 13 policemen. Lagos Assembly, CSO and others brutalized lawyer over council poll suit. And um, we can find here Mackinde running one-man show, mismanaging insecurity. Um, lastly, on the punch this morning, CCT chair sues Senate and victim questions National Assembly's powers. Those are the big ones on the punch we're taking this morning. On the nation, states repayment of $2.1 billion threatens workers' wages. CBN to give bridge facility. Above the headline on the nation, insecurity, Ibadan Obas Council, faults Mackinde. Senators, reps explain positions on electoral bill. INEC should use technology. Lagos APC Council poll candidates gets flag. Banditry, presidency knocks Kuka over claims. 1.6 million candidates to write 2021 WSSCE. 17 die in Oshun or Tadala Bridge accidents. And also below the headline on the nation, New members, returning officers, free to contest APC Congresses. Those are the stories we're looking at this morning. And on the Guardian newspapers uh, last week this morning, high prices uh, deprive faithful of Salah celebration amid declining inflation. Uh, review import tariffs on inputs to check inflation, says Yusuf. And also currency depreciation is disastrous for imports dependent economy. Also on the punch, Nigeria's 2022 digital switchover uh, target uncertain as federal government slows on timeline. CCT chair sues Lawan, Malami and others over probe for alleged assault. Um, no herbal cure for COVID-19 yet, Navdak insists. Another Nigerian Air Force jet report reportedly crashes in Kaduna, force reacts. And um, this one here says, you're not doing enough on security, about on traditional council, tells uh, Shei Makinde. Good morning, once again, Mr. Tunde Kolawale. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, my brother. All right, let's, let's quick, quickly start with the um, conversation on um, uh, electronic transmission of results. Uh, the, of course, uh, punch this morning says, Buhari's aid defends rejection. 
NBA and others say resolution is illegal and selfish. And there's also comments um, with the Senate. It says Senate listened to Communications Commission, cited risk of hacking, uh, says Ojudo. So let's get your reaction to that first. Uh, there was a, a voting that happened a few days ago uh, that has gotten a lot of Nigerians talking. Well, um, let me quickly say that um, since the APC and President Muhammad Buhari came to power, every day, every time, we continue to get one shocker or the other since this government came into power. Of recent, the whole nation woke up to the reality and the shock of the kidnap of uh, Mr. Namdin Karno in Fariwe, Kenya. Here in Nigeria, we also witnessed the shock of the um, genocide attack on the, home from, on the home of Mr. Sandu Ikuhu, the destruction of his properties, his vehicles, and then the use of a pistol to kill innocent Nigerians by the state security service. And thereafter, we also witnessed the very obnoxious provisions of the petroleum industry bill, in which as much as 30% of revenue generated from petroleum will be used to process for oil onshore in the northern part of the country. That was a project President Muhammad Buhari started when he was military head of state. That is what the APC and President Muhammad Buhari have again rammed down the neck of the Nigerian people through this PID bill. We will recollect that before the last election, there was also a proposal to incorporate electronic transmission of results and electronic voting into our electoral system which the president refused to sign. And then we now have a situation in modern times in which mere transmission of election results has become an issue and has been shut down. And certain persons from certain parts of the country have now embarked on an exercise of self-congratulation that they are able to forestall and um, I mean the use of I mean the use of transmission of electronic to, to, to transmit results. They are also beating their chest that they have been able to get as much as 30 percent for onshore petroleum prospecting in the northern part of the country. Every day we wake up to the reality that the country or the people in power today are not interested and inclusive uh, governance. The truth of the matter is that uh, when you look at the constitution under the provisions um, uh, creating NINEC, the responsibility as to get out to undo money the election is solely that of the INEC. Uh, the National Communication Commission has no role to play in there. The electronic transmission of results I think as per se, this section 194, there are can to remember precisely now. Let's see the exclusive preserve of INEC. In fact, for me, it's an administrative matter. If INEC so decides, look, when we conduct this result, we want to transmit it both manually and electronically. We don't require to even make any law to back that up. It's an administrative thing. It can be part of the manual. Administrative manual that I make usually prepare and distribute to those staffers who participate in the conduct of uh, the election. More importantly, you are aware that I make is presently using the card reader and it is being used all over the country. When you swap your register, I mean your voter's card against the card reader, what does it do? It goes to the INEC headquarters to hit some server in there to confirm that whether you are a bona fide register, I mean, you bona fide register for the as a voter or not. If the card reader is being used all over the country without any debate or any injunction, as regards whether the country has a total 
a data coverage or network coverage, why should the use of uh, electronic to transmit results now be an issue? And if that as an issue, do you know after the polling officers have collected the result of the electoral digital polling booth and the respective party agents have signed, you can use the WhatsApp uh, uh, platform to take the picture of the election result sheet and then transmit it, send it to the local government headquarters where elections have been collected and from the local government headquarters to the state and then from the state to the federal. You could also, there are also some telephone assets that don't require any network. They deal, I mean, they, they operate through the satellite, such as Turaya Telephone. Where there are no networks in the country, you can give telephone, Turaya Telephone assets. So, besides presiding officers at the different polling booths, local governments and states to transmit election results. The reason why certain persons don't want the election result to be transmitted electronically is simply because they are not interested in a free and fair election. Mm. They are profiting from the primordial and chaotic and very local and primitive manner in which elections are now being conducted. Anytime the election is cleaned up and we are able to conduct the election in a very, very transparent manner, most of the people you find as governors today most of the people are senators today. Most of the people are out of representative members today. Most of the people are councillors today. To be out of business, they will no longer be able to win any of the elections that have been conducted in the country. So that is the truth of the matter. All those arguments that NCC is making, that they don't have the total data coverage in the country, is bunkum. And even if it is not bunkum, NCC has no role to play in the conduct of election in Nigeria, it is solely the prerogative of violence. And I say with all emphasis on my disposal, and I can argue this up to the Supreme Court, that I let us not even, no law ought to be made as regards how elections should be transmitted. I let could purely make it an administrative uh, matter. Right. Wow, you've made you know very serious and interesting claims there um, regarding your views on this electoral uh, transmission of results, electronic transmission of results. But let's go now to you know this issue of security that we've been talking about. Um, we have you know statements from former President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan um, saying that bullets alone cannot stop banditry and other crimes in Nigeria, and that the federal government needs to invest in you know lots of programs. When we take a look at some of the programs that the federal government has initiated, would you say it's living up to expectation to, you know, take Nigerians out of poverty and, you know, solve the socioeconomic challenges that we're having? You mean the program against insecurity? Yeah, programs against insecurity, against poverty, against unemployment. There are some programs that the federal government has. So how would you score them? Would you say they're doing enough? Or do you think the government needs to have more targeted um, programs? There's a one where it says 774,000 Nigerians will be um, paid to do many out jobs. There is the you know, homegrown school feeding program. There's so many other programs. What I'm saying, how effective would you say those programs have been in you know, lifting up the status of the ordinary Nigerian? What? If the program was to be working, 33% of Nigerians by now, after six years of this uh, government, will not be out of uh, a work. You will also recollect that statistics were published, I think by the Nigerian, I mean by the International Labor Organization, not too long ago, that Nigeria has the second highest rate of unemployment in the world. And if you have a population of about 200 million people, that continues to grow, and in which the youth population is about 50 to 55 percent, you will realize that we have enormous responsibilities in our hands. What are the methods they have adopted in lifting people out of poverty? We see the traders' money, we saw the CBN COVID intervention fund, we saw the food program for children in the school, we also saw the 774 jobs have uh, been uh, managed by first of Kiyamo in the respective uh, local governments. And uh, three other 
a program for the farmers in the different parts of the country. The truth of the matter is that uh, those things are like a drop uh, in the ocean. I take uh, one example. The people who uh, profess the Yamo is asking to work in the local government. I think they are being paid 20,000 naira. I think it's about 20,000 naira per month. And they will do that for about three months. If 20,000 naira is sufficient enough for these people to commit from their respective homes to wherever they may be posted to go and do whatever job that um, are required to be done with the high cost of transportation in the country today? The answer is no. Will that be enough for them to eat lunch and breakfast in the respective places of work if they ever happen to work there? And how long is this program going to last? Maybe just about uh, three months. And did this program even went, or was it even given to those who really need the job? The answer is no. It was distributed among legislators, National Union of Road Transport Workers, senators, governors, and war again. So those who badly needed the job, they didn't get it. And then the anchor borrowers took up for the farmers and all that. Just um, last week, when the federal government released the statistics that they have spent this so much billion, I think about six billion on the farmers or whatever in the country and other. The farmers association came out to refute the claim that they haven't got any money very close to that, and that the most of the money is going to the politicians. You also saw what happened with the food that is said to be provided for school children. At the time that children were locked up in their respective homes due to COVID-19, the minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria said she was feeding the children in their respective homes when she never had the addresses or locations where those children were being guaranteed, where they were staying with their parents. So we haven't seen much sincerity in the way and manner this government has uh, said it is taking Nigeria people out of poverty. In the country that I know, this is not how poverty allegation is addressed. With the kind of population that we have, the best and better way to address property elevation, will it really be to go to the grassroots, buy tractors, buy a festa, provide good seedlings, and attract the youthful population into farming, into agriculture. To also elevate people out of poverty, you will need to reorientate the full animal to embrace the animal of boundary so that they can settle down and then the animals will be better used, not just in terms of meat, but also in terms of uh, a milk. And then their children will also be able to go to school and appreciate the necessity of embracing animal or boundary. It's all about hot, hot noise, hot, hot air, without much being done in some of these places. And then we also want to elevate people or take people out of progress. Uh, poverty. You need to embark on massive, massive housing projects uh, all over the place. So that we little or no money, such as we saw during Elijah Jack and era, people were buying a three bedroom flat for as little as 5,000 naira. And they were allowed to pay over time. So that if it was 50 naira you had at the time or 20 couple, you go and pay to the bank. And then uh, your account will be credited. But you know, finally pay the money. Some of those properties have been so far more than 25 million today. So this government is not sincere about taking people out of poverty. They haven't approached the taking of people out of poverty, the holistic manner, the proper manner, the scientific manner, the practical manner in which it should be approached. And so I agree with Dr. Goodlord Jonathan that not much is being done with regards to elevating people out of poverty. It is the politicians and their friends that are benefiting from the current program of elevating people out of poverty. Imagine a legislator buying shoe shine boxes for people, for youth in some states, as part of a poverty elevation program. Some are buying them wheelbarrow to elevate them out of poverty. How a wheelbarrow will elevate them out of poverty, I really don't know. Some also buy or cut a motorcycle 
buy a motorcycle and let it pull out of over there. I don't know. Some of the money that has been wasted on some of these programs would have been better utilized building vocational center for these youth to learn new skills and new orientation so that they can really work and earn money for themselves. Right, if you seek a man out of fish, it is better than to start giving pieces of meat once in a while to feed himself. Right. And that will not be sustainable. Mr. Kolawale, um, before we go, I want you to quickly uh, speak on the um, issues in your state where it says that uh, uh, some uh, monarchs have claimed that uh, Shei Makinde is, you know, failing with regard to security in the state. And, you know, they say he's mismanaging the security situation in the state. Quickly respond to that. Uh, do you think the governor has all, or do you agree with these monarchs? I agree totally. You will recollect that uh, on two occasions, I have raised the alarm that Shei Makinde has taken on your pack to the era of the Lamidi Yadidibu era in which it was the Tuali, the hoodlums and talk that were dictating and managing security in or your state. And when you have those manners of people managing security, you can be rest assured that they are never likely to get a secure environment. Most of the people are also recruited into the so-called Amatekun that they have started. And his political talk, the private army that he has used to move fight and win elections, those are the people that he uses as a Matepo. Then you also find out that a Matepo in most of the Yoruba states, especially in your city particular too, they are much, much active in the city center than the forest and the rural areas where they were supposed to be protecting the rural people from the full army, bandits, or kidnappers, or whoever may be harassing them over there. The young man, when he first started, we thought he was going to be different from some of these other politicians. But he has been behaving, or he has taken your part to the Lamida de Guerra, and also behaving like fire or share in the first time. Every activity that Shehima Kide is carrying out in the North State today is geared towards how he's going to secure the second term, using some of these security people to set the score, to, 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 to rein in potential political opponents. And it's not been wider consultation with the grassroots people as regards how security should be tackled. Because it's approach to security is coming from a very, very selfish perspective. Uh, you actually can now distinguish between the old fire share and then the man you have in public space now in a in the way and manner uh, these people are managing their respective states. And it is a tragedy. You will recall that when Atumabi was there, one of the first things that Atumabi did was to rein in all the private armies of the other people and the politicians of this war. For that throughout the period that Atumabi was there, there was relative, relative peace throughout all your state. If not absolutely, at least we had relative peace. But the story is totally different today. We suspect a Mark India as educated as he is, as widely traveled as he is, as comfortable as he is materially, to do things in a very scientific manner and in a very, very inclusive manner. Right. It is God that gave him power this first time, and uh, this first time. If it is also the wish of God that we get the second time, he won't get it without persecuting right. and visiting Mr. his Kola private Ali. army on his potential political opponent. All right. Um, thank you very much for starting up the week uh, with us. Uh, we, of course, always enjoy your perspective on issues. We wish you a great day ahead. Thank you, Mr. Kolawale. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break now here on The Breakfast. And when we come back, we're going back in history to tell you of things that happened on this day many years ago. Do stay with us.